Harmonic here to help you out with your all region audition excerpts today. The first etude we will look at is Dots Hour number no. 5, otherwise known as Schroeder number no. 36 in A minor, which is a key we are all going to be very used to after a few weeks here. The first thing you should do when preparing this excerpt, as with all excerpts, is get your metronome out. Um, this one in particular, though, uh, needs to be a very steady dotted quarter note equals 100. Uh, it's really not that fast, it's not as intimidating as it looks once you really get uh, the steadiness down and the bow stroke down. If you haven't already numbered your measures, or if they're not in your part, I would go ahead and do this now. Um, it will be extremely useful, uh, mostly because when you look at this etude, it's just a sea of notes. And if you continue to look at it that way, not treating it as a piece of music that you can break up more and more, um, it will just begin to feel very tedious, not only for you, but for the judges as well when you get to your audition. So once you are looking at a numbered piece of paper, I would go ahead and mark in where the phrases happen. And to me, this happens roughly every eight bars, at least in the beginning, meaning that you start on measure one and all the way up until the downbeat of measure nine is the first phrase, the downbeat of measure nine also being the beginning of the next phrase. Uh, in case you wanted to know, this is called elision. It's something that happens a lot in music. Um, you don't need to know that. But that means that the next uh, elision happens on measure 17, the end of the previous phrase, the beginning of the next. And then starting there, the phrases start to kind of speed up harmonically, meaning that they happen every four bars, the next one being at 21, and then 25, and so on and so on. One reason that I'm sticking to these smaller phrases uh, after a while is one because I feel like there is an uneven uh, phrase somewhere in here, uh, something like a 12 bar phrase. Um, and the other reason being that this will actually help you practice, I, I believe. If you start working on this eight measures at a, at a time or one phrase at a time, uh, it allows you so many more possibilities in terms of practicing every single transition. So what I recommend you do is you label each of these, either with an A, Roman numeral, whatever you feel like, so that uh, measures 1 through 9 is the A group, 9 through 17 is the B group, so on and so on, uh, and you draw that out of a hat, and that's the thing that you're going to practice on that particular day. That will make this piece seem so much less daunting and so much more structured, I, I feel like, which of course is very important. As far as technical things in this A2 go, uh, the dynamics is one of the first problems we encounter because uh, just like in the Lee A2 that we'll get to, uh, the range only goes from mezzo forte to forte. It's, it's not much on paper, but to me that just means keep it at a very soloistic sound. It is a solo A2, um, but there's still a lot of room for, for dynamic contrast. Uh, mezzo forte can be anything from piano to well, mezzo forte, and forte can go for all the way up to fortissimo. It just depends on what's happening in the music. Um, also, don't be afraid to add more phrase markings that are in here. The first phrase, for example, is not completely stagnant all the way up until measure eight. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs that you can really bring uh, out more of in, in the music. On terms of the bow stroke, <clears throat> which is, of course, the reason that this etude really exists, make sure that it's very sticky in the string. Uh, you never want it to leave the string, even though there's so many uh, string crossings going on. Um, and it's just something to practice very close to the frog, but in performance, it should be a little bit farther out, not quite at the middle, um, but not quite at the frog, so you can get still this kind of mixture of heaviness and lightness in the bow stroke, and I hope you'll see what I mean. It's always sticking in the string with a very sort of heavy articulate beginning, and then a lightness afterwards. But again, the lightness does not come from picking it up off the string, uh, which causes you to lose control, but rather still in, as though the bow just kind of pops, if that makes sense. Um, 
um, once you get this faster. <laughs> truly stops it just kind of uh, hooks somewhere else and can, continues to go you can also control dynamics much more just by adding a little bit more arm uh, arm length to it all extensions in this etude must be prepared uh, earlier on not uh, reacting in the heat of the moment uh, measure 34 is a good example here you can see that I'm already reaching back for the E flat by the time I'm getting to the C. If I don't do that, it becomes very hoppy and will definitely be out of tune, I can uh, guarantee you. So just make sure that every single one is more or less prepared. Um, maybe another example would be uh, measure 44. Yeah. You can see I, I've already started the extension process. Uh, as soon as I can, basically. So with that, this etude, it's fairly straightforward. Um, once you get the bow stroke down, and once you separate it into sections that you know how to practice uh, what your left hand is going to do, um, it really just kind of goes on its own. Uh, once you set a metronome to it, there's not a lot more to, to think about with this. So I hope this helped, and I'll see you in the next video.